Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,285. Now, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic 1,283 to 1,285, and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, the last couple of videos, 1,283 and 1,284, we've been talking about max or min calculations with conditions or criteria. Now, in the last two videos, we did and criteria or an and logical test. Here's what we need to do in this video. We need to calculate the min value from the sales column here. But check this out. We need to ask the question, hey, sales rep column, are you Sue or are you Chin or are you Sue? Then we have to go to the products column and ask, and is it the quad? Now, technically, the way this logic would work is we'd say, is the transaction over here from the sales column, is it Sue and Quad, or is it Chin and Quad, or is it Sue and Quad? How are we going to do that in a formula? Well, we have five good examples. And just like last video, we talked about the awesome use for D-min and D-max. Now, these formulas are vastly preferred in this situation because setting up the formula in the criteria area is easier than the other solutions. The problem and the drawback of D-min and D-max is that you can't copy these formulas. But let's look at it. If you don't have to copy the formula and you have a proper data set with field names at the top, this is the way to go. Equals D-min. D is for database, min is for minimum. Hey, there's the database. You highlight the field names at the top, control, shift, down arrow, control, backspace, comma. And you have to say which field amongst all of the fields in the table you want to make the calculation upon. You can click on the cell. That's the fifth column. You could hard code this in, which is what I'm going to do. Or you could put a 5. Comma. And this is what's so amazing about all of the D functions with complex criteria. Field names at the top or criteria on different rows and, and criteria in the same row. So this whole construction here will do all of the heavy lifting. It will look through this entire database. It'll look through the sales rep and the product column and always ask the question, hey, is the transaction Sue and Quad? Or is it Chin and Quad? Or is it Sue and Quad? You've got to be kidding me. That is amazing. Now, also, when it comes to text like this, you want to enter an equal sign and the actual criteria. I use delete apostrophe. There's other ways to do this also. If you don't have that equal sign, then it does a partial text or approximate match through the sales rep column. Now, we're never going to have anything but Sue, but that's the proper way to set up text. All right, so that means if we're doing max with complex criteria equals D max tab database control shift down or control backspace comma. And I'm going to put a 5 here because that's the fifth column we're making a calculation upon comma and Oh, this is so easy. The criteria, close parentheses, and control, enter. Now, of course, the problem comes is if you want to copy. So down in these next three examples, we're going to see formulas that will allow us to copy. Now, before Excel 2010, we had to use the min and the if function. The if function will help us filter all of these values based on all of this criteria to then dump the values into the min function. So I'm going to say equals min. And then inside the min, we're going to use the if function. Now the logical test. Now this first one is pretty complex. It's or criteria. Remember, we're asking of the sales rep column, is the particular transaction Sue or Chin or Sue? Now instead of constructing a long or Boolean test, where we have three arrays and we use plus symbol to represent or condition or an or logical test. I'm going to think of it this way. I'm always going to ask the question, hey, is this particular name in this list? If we think of it that way, we can use the match function. Now, this is going to get pretty crazy. This is going to be a function argument array operation. Normally, in lookup value, we click a single sales rep name but forget it. 
I need to look at the entire column here. So I'm going to click in the top cell, Control Shift down our F4 to lock it. Man, that's a lot of values over in this column here. And because this is a function argument array operation, that instructs the match to spit out lots of answers. Now, comma, the lookup array, that's actually going to be over to the side. As we copy this formula down, relative cell reference, we'll look at each one of the sales teams and ask, is that sales rep from up there in this particular list or team? Now we have to do 0 because it's not sorted, close parentheses. Now let's just uh, check out logical tests, the match, and what is it spinning out? What does match do? Match actually tells you the relative position. So check this out. We have 1, 2, 3, all the way down here. So we're going to get a bunch of answers. And all the answers will either be relative position 1, 2, or 3. Now if it finds a name over here like Sheila Dawn that's not here, it'll give us an error. So when I hit F9, there it is. 1, because Sue was in the first position. NA's because those people were not. And then we can see we get a 3 and a 2 and a 1. So the trigger for us is the number. That means we found it. This array is the same size as this column here. Control Z. The formula would be quite messed up if we kept those errors there. And we're interested in the number. So we wrap is number around that. Close parentheses. Now, in the logical test, when I hit F9, I get trues and falses. And that will help us filter. Trues will pick out the number for the sales. Falses will indicate that we need to skip that number. Control Z. Now, that's only the first logical test. That's the OR part. Now we have to come and comma value if true. We have to put a second if. And now I simply say, hey, anything in the product column, Control Shift down on F4, are you equal to quad? F4 to lock it. That's the second logical test, comma. Now with the two logical tests, we can put our values if true. Control Shift down on F4. Those are all of the sales numbers. Now I'm going to close parentheses, close parentheses. Two ifs. Only when there's a true and a true will it pick out the number. So I can click on number one and F9. And there's our array of falses, meaning the conditions were not met. And there's our numbers. There's another number right there. That meant one of those conditions was met, the or and and together. Now these numbers, 705, 664.09, will all be dumped into the min. And because the min is programmed to ignore Ignore false values, it'll work perfect. Control Z, close parentheses. Now we have to enter this as an array formula because logical tests there and over here that argument in the if function cannot handle that array calculation without using Control Shift and Enter. Now when I Control Shift Enter, you immediately look up those curly brackets or Excel telling you it understood that this was an array calculation. Now I can copy this down, and boom, there are our answers. Now I'm not going to recreate this. I'm going to copy this in Edit Mode, Control-C, Escape, Control-V in Edit Mode, and I'm going to change the in to an X. Now we have the same exact set of falses and numbers are being dumped into the max, and now the max will find the biggest. Control-Shift and Enter, curly brackets, Double click and send it down. That's pretty amazing. That's how we did it for many years before Excel 2010. In Excel 2010, we got the aggregate. Now, I am not going to recreate all of these array formulas. So watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to click on the logical test and Control CC. I've loaded it up in the clipboard. And I'm actually going to try and pull this clipboard over here so I don't have to go as far. Now I'm going to click in the next logical test, Control-C. I'm loading them up here. Click in the values of true, Control-C. I have numbers, two array calculations. Now I can come down here and do my aggregate. Now I'm going to click Escape to revert back to the formula, including the Control-Shift-Enter, before I put it in edit mode. Now I want to come down here, equals aggregate. Since 2010, functions 
1 through 13 cannot handle array operations, but large 1 is max and small 1 is min. Those two functions, including all the way to 19, can handle array operations without Control-Shift-Enter. So I'm going to select 15 for small, comma, our array operation is going to have error. So I'm going to pick this incredible option here, number 6 in the options argument. That will ignore errors, comma. And ready for this? That argument is one of the rare arguments and functions that can handle array operations without doing any special keystroke. All right, so you ready? I need the numbers. And I'm going to divide by open parentheses, open parentheses. I'm going to select the first one, array operation range equals a particular criteria, close parentheses time. And I'm going to click on this function. This does not need parentheses because it's all contained inside the is number, but I do need a close parentheses on the end. Now when I highlight the denominator and hit F9, we get zeros and ones. 0 in the denominator will cause divide by 0 error. The 1 will allow us to pick out the number in the numerator. Control Z. Click on the array F9, and it's divide by zeros that do the filtering. There is an example of a number that met all the conditions and will be dumped into function 15, which is min. Control Z. Now I come to the end, comma. For k, I need to say, which small is it, the first, second, third, fourth? I, of course, want 1, close parentheses. Control-Enter. I do not have to Control-Shift-Enter. Actually, F2, watch this. I'm going to cheat. I don't want it looking up there, so I'm going to point and click and drag, point and click and drag. Control-Enter. Drag it down. That is amazing. Same exact numbers, but I didn't have to use Control-Shift-Enter. Now, it's easy if we want to do max. I simply highlight the entire thing, Control-C, Escape. And in Edit Mode, Control-V, and the function for max is not 15. It is 14. Control-Enter. Double click and send it down. Now, let's see if we can do the same calculations with min if. In our last video, we talked about the history of how we did max and min calculations with criteria. But or criteria is different. But no problem. This is a brand new function. I'm going to try it. Equals min ifs. The min range, that's the entire column of sales, comma, criteria range. I'm using the is number. And remember, it's the trues I'm after. So comma, and in the criteria range, I'm going to put true comma. And then I'm going to click this next one. And guess what? I don't need a direct array operation. Backspace, what I need is, and I can watch this screen tip when I type a comma. There it is. So it's in the criteria. That should work. Close parentheses and Enter. Oh, man, this same terrible message has been around forever. The same problem happens in some ifs, some ifs, count ifs, and all of those ifs or if functions, this message should say you are not allowed to do array operations in the criteria range argument. But it doesn't. It says there's some problem. Man, that is terrible. So I'm going to close this. You just have to know you are not allowed. And even if we chose a different type of array operation with our pluses or this one, it's just not going to work. Now, another thing important to conceptually understand, all of the max ifs and min ifs and sum ifs, they only do AND criteria. So when I put criteria range, criteria, and then a new one and a new one, it's doing AND criteria. Now, instead of escaping, because I haven't entered this yet, it would revert back to what was there before, which is nothing. I'm going to add a space just to leave it there to remember that that can't be done. All right, I'm going to try something different down here. Um, let's just force the issue. Let's try min ifs. And the min range, I got this range right here, comma, the criteria range. Well, now think about this. The quad isn't giving us the problem. So I'm going to click this up here and then do backspace comma, right? Because that was the entire products column. And there's the proper, and notice it's all the way up here. I'm going to drag it down here. Watch this. I'm going to go over, and I'm going to close this clipboard now in criteria range. I need to go over and get the entire sales rep column. Control shift down, I'll F4, comma, and forget this. Whereas the criteria range cannot handle an array operation, 
the criteria argument can do a function argument array operation, which means we are absolutely allowed to give it multiple items. And when we do that, we're telling min ifs to spit out multiple answers. So because there are one, two, three criteria in criteria two, the min ifs will actually go through that whole data set and find the min for Sue, Chin, and Sue. It'll spit out three answers. Close parentheses, enter. Zero. What? That's not working. F2? Yes, it's because when you do a function argument array operation, the entire function is spitting out multiple answers, in essence, an array of answers. And it can't display an array of answers in a cell. So watch this when I hit F9. Boom, there it is. Function argument array operation spitting out multiple answers. So it's working, but how are we going to pick the min from those? Because it's our goal, Control Z. I'm cheating. I'm just going to put the min function around here. That number argument won't like it because that's an array operation. So put the min around min ifs, do control shift enter, and there you have exactly the correct answer. I'm going to drag this down, go to the last cell, F2, and it's working like a charm. Now, that actually may be easier than our D min up above because the D min you had to remember to put or criteria on different rows, and and criteria on the same row, text criteria, so we had to put equal signs. But I'll let you decide. That is one way to do it. Now I'm going to copy this whole thing, Control-C, Escape, Control-V, and change the in to ax for max, and also for the min ifs, I'm going to change it to max ifs. And you've got to be kidding me. Control Shift Enter. I see my curly brackets, right? Double click and send it down. It gives me exactly the same answers as we got above. Hey, this is kind of nice and compact. If you don't want to do Control Shift Enter, there's still another way we could do this. Control C Escape. Hey, we can use equals aggregate. And what do I want? I want the min, which is 15, comma. And guess what? Since in our array argument, we're going to have min ifs. And that's not spitting out any errors. I'm using 4 to ignore nothing, comma. And in the array, control V, comma for the K, 1, close parentheses. And I don't need control shift enter. Enter, or I'm going to use control enter and copy it down. That is pretty wild. Now I'm going to highlight this one, Control-C, Escape, Control-V, change the 15, which is small, to 14, which is max. And then over here, change the N to X. If you want to click on the array and see if it's working, F9, there's the one, two, three answers it's spitting out for the three sales rep. Well, of course, we want to find the max, so that's what aggregate 14 with a 1 will do. Control Z. Look at that. Before I copy this down, I think I'm going to whoop, whoop. And Control Enter. Double click and send it down. That is simply amazing. I better clean this up here. I think I still left that. Wow, we did a lot in this video. All through the video, we were talking about how to do OR and AND criteria to do max or min calculations. We saw aggregate and max ifs with a function argument array operation, if you don't want to do Control Shift Enter. We saw the same thing with min ifs and function 15. We saw that we could put min around min ifs with that function argument array operation and use Control Shift Enter. There's the one for max. We also saw, very importantly, that the history of Excel with what should be max ifs and min ifs and all the other sum ifs and count ifs, criteria range arguments can't handle array operations. We saw how to do it with aggregate if you have 2010 or 2013 with that big array calculation. Don't have 2010 or later, we do it with a min and if. And definitely, the more complex the criteria, the more attractive D min and D max get. All right, we'll see you next video.